Here on the red carpet with Rudy Sarzo at the Dio Dreamers Never Die documentary premiere. An exciting night. How are you feeling tonight? I am blessed. I am blessed. It's so wonderful to be here. And uh, I used to play in Dio. I was Ronnie's uh, last bass player in Dio. And tonight is going to be very emotional. You know, it's going to bring back a lot of wonderful memories. And I'm going to get to learn certain things about Ronnie that I did not have the time to ask him. I was in the band from 2004 until he passed away. And I used to love sitting down with him, you know, at an airport waiting for a flight to take off and just pick his brain and ask him questions, you know, like, like a total fanboy <laughs> that I've always been of, of, uh, of Ronnie ever since I heard him sing. Who isn't, honestly? <laughs> yeah, first time, I'll never forget, first time I heard Men of the Silver Mountain. That was my entry. To, who is this guy? <laughs> Who's that? You know, and then to get to play with him and play that song with him, you know, in our set. Really, really wonderful memories. Do you consider that your favorite song that Ronnie did because it inspired you so much? The song? Oh, everything. Everything. You know, <laughs> I'll tell you a little story. Uh, when I first joined the band, you know, I was getting deep into the catalog and Gates of Babylon, it was not on the set and the set list. And I'm going, oh my God, how incredible it would be to play this song with Ronnie. So I brought it up to rehearsal and, and he goes, oh no, no, we tried it before and it just didn't sound right. And I go, please Ronnie, please, please, please can we just try it once? And I say, okay, kid, let's try it. So we did. And then he said, okay, I guess it stays in the, <laughs> in the set. So, uh, so we did it for, for a few years, you know, for a few tours. And that was one of the highlights personal to be on stage with him playing that song gates of babylon yeah Amazing. and i love that story <laughs> thank you for sharing that and uh, so just to kind of wrap things up i know you have just recently rejoined quiet riot so just yeah. give us an idea of what's going on in your world right now well being back home is like no other feeling you know um it's wonderful because you know to go on stage every night to celebrate the legacy of the band um next year is the 40th anniversary of the release of Metal Health. But we're celebrating the making of Metal Health because that has its own story to it. You know, this year, to th uh, 2022. And um, also to celebrate the memory of Frankie Benali, Kevin Dubro, and Randy Rhodes. Because I go back to the 70s. That's when I first played with Choir Riot in 78. Thank you very much for your time today, Rudy. Well, thank you, Chelsea. God bless. The Dio Dreamers Never Die documentary premiere. How are you feeling tonight? I feel great. I'm very proud, very humbled, and very privileged to be a part of this. And I'm pretty certain that people realize that Dreamers Never Die is in the song that Ronnie and I wrote called Could Have Been a Dreamer. And he says, because dreamers never die. And that came a big way because being in Dio wasn't a job and it wasn't a gig. It was a dream come true. I grew up in a, a, a very abusive family, in and out of the hospitals and surgeries, almost bled out once. Lived on the streets in San Diego, and five years later, headlining Madison Square Garden with my favorite singer, Ronnie James Dio, performing music that we wrote and recorded together. So dreams come true. It's not just something people say. So it's especially something that I'll never, ever, you can't ever forget something like that. Sounds like this is a particularly meaningful night, and I'm sure a lot of memories are coming up as you're, you know, thinking about your experiences with Dio as well. That's right, exactly. And even when we play, that's the main reason I like to play with the Dio Disciples is the fans, is afterwards. Because to me, it's not a rock concert. It's a memorial service in the form of a rock concert. Because every note and every chord matters because every note and every chord is connected directly to over 30 years of memories on being vaccinated by a photograph needle, listening to that music, uh, just a kid, and then being on stage with the man himself. It's just a trip, you know? And so, and then his fans. Ronnie was such a kind man. And he would always treat his fans as special as possible. It would almost be like every single concert, there'd be at least some sort of a a promotion, either radio promotion or the Dio fan club promotion, and the winners would get backstage. So they when, get, when they get backstage, it's like the golden ticket and meeting Willy Wonka. 
so he gets to meet the king in the kingdom. And back then especially, those days were catered. So there was like food for 40 people in one night. So when they would meet him, the first thing they would do is Ronnie can seem very powerful and almost kind of intimidating on stage if you don't know him personally. But then he blows their minds with kindness. They come to meet him all scared, and he goes, hey, how you doing? Can I get you anything? Can I do anything for you? And their minds are going, Ronnie wants to make me a sandwich. What do I do? You know? And he blew their minds with kindness. Awesome. That's, you know, I feel like a, a lot of us hear these stories. I mean, I never had the fortune of meeting Ronnie in person, and, you know, I come here to celebrate his memory and, you know, loving his music, but that's what I've heard is that, you know, what a, what a real, genuine, generous human being he was behind the amazing theatrics that we all love. Well, did I tell you the tuna fish sandwich story? I think I did. If I didn't and you want to hear it later, let me know and I'll tell it to you because it really shows you the kind of kind man he was. Thank you for your time on the red carpet today and enjoy the film. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. We're getting a little bonus story here now. Okay, so I got injured late, or earlier. So anyways, I was living in my car, so I was homeless. So when I got the um, gig for Rough Cut, that's how I met Ronnie for the first time, was Jake left to join Ozzy, you know, after Randy Rhodes passed away is where I get sad. But then when I got in the band, I was still homeless, so I would live on everybody's ch couch. So I would have to buy cheap food, so I bought a can of tuna and made a tuna fish sandwich. The band member came home and threw a fit that he said up and down, that's my can of tuna. I mean, how much money can a can of tuna cost in 1983? But he threw a fit, and that fit was heard around the world. I didn't say a word. The very next day, I look out the window and I see what I think is Ronnie's car pulling up. It's Ronnie and Wendy with two full bags of groceries coming up the steps. They kick the door because they don't have an, a free arm to knock. I open up the door. He's, they both just rush in. They slam the groceries on the door and they say, these are for Craig. Leave them alone. And they move and they, out they went to go back and record for the Holy Diver album. They shut down the recordings of Holy Diver to go to a store to shop specifically for four full bags of groceries over a can of tuna for me. How do you get over that? That's the kind of man Ronnie James Zeal was and still is to me. We're here tonight at the Dio documentary premiere, Dreamers Never Die, and I just want to kind of get your thoughts and feelings on being here celebrating Dio tonight. Well, you know, Dio is the, the uh, king of heavy metal singing in my opinion uh, was a huge influence on me um, and this is really cool that they're doing this um, for him you know I, it's it's, he's, it's well well deserved so do you have a particular favorite song from Ronnie James Dio something that's really has inspired you um, I like stand up and shout a lot and I like um, all the fools sailed away that's probably two of my favorite songs he has but I mean I love them all I mean any any time they're on in the car, I just crank it up anyway. But I think and sing along? Too, yeah, oh, of course. I scream along. <laughs> so tell us about uh, DC4 and what you've got going on right now with Rowan Robertson. Uh, we have our band, uh, DC4. Um, I don't know where he went. Um, and we're about to, once uh, my brother Jeff is in Armored Saint, and he's in the band also with us. And my brother Sean is in LA Guns, and he's also in the band with us. But they're, uh, they, they're, about, they're doing tours right now. But when they get back, we're going to start a new record with DC4. So hopefully that'll be out sometime next year. G God willing, there's no more pandemics or anything like no, no, that. <laughs> we will positive energy. This yes. will not happen. <laughs> Good stuff. Well, thanks for your time and enjoy the film tonight. I will. Thank you so much. The Dio Dreamers Never Die documentary premiere. How are you? Is that what this is? I, I, I thought it was the, the new sh uh, Top Gun movie. I went to the wrong place. I mean, we're in the Chinese theater. You could probably see that tonight, yeah, too. Probably, too, yeah. No, Double yeah. feature. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you and Top Gun. Who, yeah. who, who expected it? <laughs> no, so just to kind of give me your thoughts and feelings on being here celebrating Dio tonight. Well, it just it's an honor. I never expected to be here, uh, you know, at a premiere. But uh, it's cool. I'm, I'm, I'm really proud. of. Obviously, um, I uh, maybe have some footage in there because I used to go around when we were on the road. I had a camera camcorder, an old camcorder, and I filmed all kinds of stuff, you know. And uh, so I threw whatever I could out there. I, I don't know if it made the cut or not. And then uh, I guess they tell me I'm in it. I don't know. <laughs> we're going to find out in a little while, apparently. <laughs> That's cool. 
And a, a couple of months ago, you were also at the Rainbow with the 80th birthday celebration of Dio as well. So Dio has been uh, very much in the spotlight lately. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, that was a fun night. Yeah, yeah, a lot of good people there. So tell me what's uh, going on in your musical life right now. Any current projects, anything on the horizon? Well, I'm just doing my own thing right now. I'm teaching a lot and then developing teaching software and stuff, or music, you know, and having fun with that. And it's, you know, just waiting for things to pick up, you know, doing this, you know, in the meantime. Yeah, All right. Do you um, have any particular Ronnie memory that uh, comes to your mind that you want to share? Oh, God, do you have a few hours? Yeah, I can't think of one off the top of my head, but I'm sure there'll be some in the movie. Yeah, which was awesome. It's well, great, thank you it's for great that they're keeping, the, keeping it alive. Yeah. We're all grateful that, you know, these memories of Dio are, are living strong. Okay. <laughs> so thanks for your time today. Okay, you're welcome. Enjoy the okay, you too. First, just want to open things up by asking your, your thoughts and feelings about being here celebrating Dio tonight. Well, I'm so glad. I am so honored and privileged to be here. Uh, Ronnie was such an important part of my musical life. Uh, by the way, we're both from Western New York. So uh, geographically, we, ha we had some, uh, some DNA to share. I'm from New York as well. Yeah. So um, in 1986, Kiel uh, supported Dio in Europe. It was our first ever tour to Europe. And it was the Ron Kiel and Ron Dio show. And uh, fast forward a couple years later, uh, when I left Kiel and started Cold Sweat, uh, Wendy Dio became our manager. And Ronnie produced uh, the demos that got assigned to MCA Records. And then... If that wasn't enough, he took us on tour with him after our album came out. So I, I, uh, I really am indebted to Ronnie, and uh, I feel very fortunate you know, to have been in his circle and, and to experience uh, you know, his, his greatness in every way, not just as a performer, but as a human being. Now, that's what a lot of people don't realize. You know, as, as great as a performer and musician uh, as he was, he was a greater human. So, uh. Do you have any uh, particular memories from that tour that really stick out to you? I'm sure there's a ton, but something that just really grabs well, you. The last day of the tour, we got uh, flour dumped on us. Uh, yeah, like oil and flour. We, we were like uh, the Pillsbury Doughboys. Yeah. So there was always pranks going on. But Ron, Ronnie had a mischievous side to him, too. You know, he, he, uh, he, li he, liked, he, liked, to, uh, he liked to pull a prank or two. So, yeah. Keeps things interesting on the road, I'm sure. On your toes, for sure. Yeah. Have you seen the film yet, or this is your uh, also first time? No, I mean, I've just seen little bits and clips that uh, have been released so far, but I'm really looking forward to this. Yeah. Thank you for your time today, and enjoy the film in there. Uh, thank you so much. Here on the red carpet with Doug Pinnick. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing good. How are you? Doing excellent. Excited yeah. to be celebrating the life of Dio here today. Yeah, every year, you know, I don't forget about him, you know. I love the way he sang. I love his personality. And, um, and, and he, he was a big inspiration to me way back when he first came out, you know, the Rainbow and that kind of stuff. So when King's X toured with him and we got to hang out. So, so I got lots of cool pictures and stories. Awesome guy. I miss him. So you had heard Rainbow and been inspired by his music when you were becoming a singer yourself oh, yeah. and then got to tour with him. Oh, yeah. I was, well, we're, yeah, he, uh, way back a long time ago, it was it like early 80s, I think, is when I first heard him with Rainbow, and uh, I wanted to sound like that. I had been singing for like 10 years before that in bands, but uh, he was a big inspiration. <laughs> you feel like you kind of maybe changed your, your musical direction and, you know, after you heard him and like uh, tried to be... The biggest thing that I got from his voice was how he could get distorted and then get soft. Turn, he could turn the distortion down and bring it back up. I thought that was, that was just amazing. <laughs> Do you have uh, one song from Ronnie's career that just really, you know, inspired you the most? Well, Long Live Rock and Roll. I mean, it, it's just, there's something, it's just a no-brainer. The day I heard it, I was in, you know. <laughs> so tell us what's going on with you currently. What projects you have coming up? Well, we got a new album out, King's X. It's called Three Sides of One. It's been out for about three weeks now, and it seems like it's doing good, and people are liking it, so excited about that. Other than that, just touring and doing, doing what we do. <laughs> Congrats on the new album release, and it's going to be awesome, and uh, enjoy the film tonight. Okay, N and you enjoy your time tonight, too. <laughs> May the groove be with you. <laughs> Perfect intro. <laughs> there we go. So we have Oni Logan we'll, here. We'll edit that out, right, Chelsea? <laughs> we'll see. We'll see about that. <laughs>
Uh, so we're here on the red carpet for Dio, Dreamers Never Die, the documentary. Yes, representing over here. I love it. And of course, you're always representing Dio with Dio Disciples and, you know, keeping, helping to keep the memory alive with everyone. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Uh, we do it with gratitude and we do it with uh, our utmost professionalism that we can uh, offer. And uh, yeah, we get up there and represent Ronnie, keep his legacy alive. We're looking forward to the movie tonight. And uh, we'll be heading out on the road as well, representing him again and paying homage to him and taking him out live uh, for live shows here in a hopefully not too distant future. Yeah. So tell me what uh, first inspired you about Ronnie James Dio. His voice, his artistry, his lyrics, ultimately his voice. Uh, I mean, come on, one of a kind. He has his own zip code. When you hear his voice, you know that's Ronnie James Dio. Yeah. Do you have, um, you know, you get to, to sing the songs of Ronnie James Dio doing Dear, Dear Disciples, and of course I'm sure there's a whole discography to choose from, but do you have any one that just really resonates with you the most, that you feel just connects you with Ronnie's memory the most, maybe? Well, yes, uh, there's a few of them, uh, but one that would give me chills every night when we would be, like, in South America representing Ronnie's legacy, it would be This Is Your Life, which is one piece of one song that was written just on piano and his vocal, and it would give me chills every night. And it was, we would perform it at the end of the show. Uh, well, you have Gates of Babylon, Children of the Sea. Uh, you have, um, you know, uh, uh, Heaven and Hell. And, you know, I mean, on and on. I mean, there's a repertoire and a, and a vast amount of songs from the catalog that Ronnie had written. So any song with Ronnie's voice on it as a singer to get up there and represent is an honor and it's a workout. I bet it's a workout actually yeah it was a vocal acrobat in many ways. You have, to, you have to be on point or at least give it all you got because you know there's going to be listeners out there and fans that are going to want to hear you uh, step up to the plate. So outside of Dio Disciples do you have any current projects going on anything? Yes I'm uh, in the middle of writing uh, new songs for a solo album so that's in the works um yeah i'm doing that right now and talking to a couple of different record companies so we're trying to get all the logistics ready and and in line to make that happen yeah good stuff to look forward to so Absolutely. thanks for your time tonight thank you chelsea have a wonderful evening hope you enjoy the show hope everybody enjoys the the love and the memory of ronnie james dio and the documentary you have to see it Dreamers never die. Here on the red carpet with one of the filmmakers of what we're here to celebrate tonight, Dio Dreamers Never Die. How are you doing tonight? I'm good, man. Thanks for having us. Of course, yes. So, I mean, I have so many questions I want to ask you about the making of this film. But, I mean, Dio, of course, Ronnie specifically had, you know, such a, a long legacy and so many bands and so, such a big career. How did you even begin to, to take a deep dive into his life and start to assemble this? Well, I think part of it, uh, the, the, I think one of the reasons that we clicked with Wendy Dio, who is Ronnie's widow, who is somebody that was, you know, looking for filmmakers to help tell Ronnie's story, is she was looking for people that were good filmmakers, but also people that understood Ronnie. And it just so happened that Demian and I grew up huge heavy metal fans, huge Dio fans, you know, our whole lives. And somebody that we legitimately credit for shaping the people that we became and the follow the path of being filmmakers, you know, be, be, those messages of believing in yourself and don't give up on your dreams. That's one of the reasons I'm here. So it felt like such a perfect like stars aligning of uh, you know an opportunity to make a movie about somebody that you know was hugely influential in our lives. That's amazing. So it was a collaboration with Wendy Dio. So I'm sure she had plenty of stories and memorabilia and things yeah. to be able to share with you. Yeah, we were able to get so much of like never before seen photos and video uh, from her archives and you know stories that you know she hasn't told to a lot of people. So. It was just such an amazing experience and you know now I feel when you come into this world as an outsider there's a group of people that are you know insular that have been with the Ronnie Dio camp for you know a number of years and now I feel like you know a huge privilege and honor in my life is to feel included in that as well you know What do you feel was the biggest challenge in making this I mean the biggest challenge for us we you know we were we made this film before the pandemic and then the pandemic happened and so that extended things much like many people in our business had to figure out how to kind of keep it going but you know for for us 
it was a welcome extension because we actually got to spend more time digging into more like every piece of archival and every piece of audio that we could uh, to really like, and a lot of times you don't have that uh, freedom of length, you know, of, of time, uh, you know, because things want to get done on a time and a budget and stuff. So the pandemic actually really helped in that way. And I've said it a million times and I'll say it again, you know, what better uh, if I had to spend time longer on one per project in my life, I'm glad that every day I got to go into work and listen to Ronnie sing and hear Ronnie talk. Like, what an honor and a privilege. I mean, that's not work. That's like a dream, you know? Dreamers never die, as you guys said <laughs> in this film title. Well, that's awesome. I'm very much looking forward to seeing this tonight. Thank awesome. you for your hard work on it, and uh, thanks for your time tonight. Thanks so much. Take care. Very excited to see this film tonight. I was talking with uh, Don just now about, you know, how you guys collaborated with Wendy Dio and kind of assembling this whole thing. But I was saying that, you know, Dio has such a, a long legacy and so much to his career that I was curious how you even just began to dig into some of that. You know, I think whenever we go into making a movie about music or any topic, we kind of separate it into two layers. We have this epic story to tell on the bottom, which is Ronnie's like career which is essentially four careers in one but we're always trying to sort out that top like emotional layer that gets to your heart and with Ronnie who's such a great person that starts to develop as well and so I think when you see this film you learn a lot but you also go on this emotional ride the ups and downs of sort of you know hanging with this guy who's essentially you know just a, a total hero a total hero you know even being here on the red carpet tonight, everybody has so many stories about, you know, what a generous, just genuine good person Ronnie was. So um, that must have been also really cool to, to explore that side of him for the film. It's so cool. And, you know, I'm over here seeing people we interviewed who haven't seen the film yet. And just knowing that they're about to walk in the theater, there's like tears in their eyes. And so like the love for Ronnie runs deep and he, Ronnie and Wendy surrounded themselves with the coolest people. So, you know, we got to walk into the homes of like Don and I's childhood heroes. You know, we're going to interview Rob Halford, we're Geezer Butler, and they're, because Ronnie was so cool, they're in turn being so cool to us, and it was just a surreal experience. Is there any kind of one standout moment from making the film to you, something that really stuck with you? There are a ton of moments. There are a ton of moments like that didn't make it into the cut, that like just making the film, hanging out in Ronnie's house for me, seeing when I was a kid, I would watch those hard and heavy VHS tapes and Ronnie was in his house doing the interviews and I drank a beer at the bar with the glass that Ronnie had you know, in those videos or you know, going to Vinny Apice's house and he pulls his shoebox out of like Holy Diver never before heard rehearsal tapes, you know, like crazy. And Don and I, as filmmakers, had to keep our cool as fans freaking out a little bit, so yeah. That balance of like yeah. internally screaming while on the outside, you're like, wow, that's cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're chill, man, we're chill. <laughs> Very cool. Well, I feel like it's going to be a very great film. Very excited to see it tonight. And thanks for your hard work on it. Thank you. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Cheers. All right. We're here with Ricky Warwick on the red carpet of Dio Dreamers Never Die. How are you feeling about coming here and celebrating Ronnie tonight? Oh, man, I'm so looking forward to seeing this. Um, you know, I mean, the guy did so much. He is so much. He means so much. Um, I think it's going to be pretty emotional to watch the documentary and, you know, go back through the great man's life. When, um, when did you first discover Dio's music in your life and what, what inspired you about it? I think, you know, what I've always loved about Ronnie is his lyrics. And I think, you know, that appealed to me when I was a kid. I'm, I've always been a fan of words. And, and Ronnie writes a lot of deep stuff and there's a lot going on there. And I think that's, that's one of the things that appealed to me. But I've been a 14, 15 year old kid getting into music in Ireland, getting into Thin Lizzy, Dio, you know, Motorhead, you know, and it was just all part of that that sort of, oh my God, this, this whole brand new world's on with all these great bands. And Ronnie was very much part of that, you know. Do you have any one uh, kind of standout Ronnie James Dio song from any band that he's been in? Um, I can stand up and show I think just because it's what it is. I mean, what, my favorite Lizzie song is, uh, is Do Anything You Want To, you know, from Black Rose. And it's the same empowerment about just believing in yourself and, um, you know, not really caring what anybody else thinks and staying true to your beliefs. I think that's why that, that Dio song connects with me so much, you know. Yeah. Tell us what's going on in your musical life well, right now. We are Blackstar Writers are about to put out a brand new record in January 2023. Um, it's called Wrong Side of Paradise. 
We've already put out two singles from that, and there's going to be another couple, but the album drops January 2023, and we will be hitting the road next year. Looking forward to it. Thanks for your time tonight. Thank you, Chelsea. Thank you very much. So let's talk about Dio tonight, honestly, and your, your One inspiration. One of my favorite singers. Oh, my God. This guy uh, never, ever can have a bad night of singing. Legit. I would say literally um, one of the strongest voices uh, ever. And um, I was lucky enough to sing, you know, the song uh, Long Live Rock and Roll in the movie Rockstar. And um, not the easiest songs to sing, okay? But um, anyway, yeah. Anyone who takes on a Dio to, as a vocalist, that's definitely a feat. And you are a very renowned vocalist in your own right with a, a range beyond mo what most can reach. So I'm sure it wasn't too much of a stretch for you. Well, you know, thank you. Um, I don't know what else to say. I just say thank you uh, uh, just for the opportunity to be able to do that. You know. So. What are your feelings about just being here celebrating Dio's life tonight? I think it's, I think it's amazing. I think it's uh, amazing that it's alive i think it's amazing that the uh the legacy is moving and going and growing you know it is it's beautiful it really is beautiful and i mean thank you thank you for having me i mean tonight there's been so many great stories on the red carpet so far people who knew dio and just you know were with in ronnie's life about what a good genuine person he was and did you have any experiences or memories with ronnie i did not and sadly i did not my uh, experience was, wa was uh, literally watching uh, him perform and watching the video. So, and a great singer. That's a connection too, though. I mean, that in itself. I mean, I get it. I mean, I can, you know, I can hear somebody perform and sing. I could feel their energy in their soul. So that's enough for me. So. I completely relate. I never had the chance of even seeing Ronnie live or, you know, seeing anything to do with him, but I feel that connection as well. So we're, we're all here because we love and appreciate Ronnie in some way. So I agree. Long live rock and roll. Yeah. Thank you for your time tonight. Thank you. Here on the red carpet with Sean McNabb at the Dio Dreamers Never Die premiere. How are you feeling tonight? Amazing. It's going to be a great night and a testament to the man that Ronnie was. And, and uh, I can't wait to see it. I'm very excited. Tell me about uh, in what way you feel connected with Ronnie James Dio. What ways has he inspired you? I knew him since I was a kid, you know, when I got in Quiet Riot, I was 21 years old and, and um, I met him very early on and he was uh, monumental in showing me how to carry myself and many other rockers and, you know, we were just kids, so he ha already had a ton of experience, so it was, it was a great role model for us. Is there one particular song from Ronnie's discography that, that really stands out to you? Oh my God. Um, I love Rainbow Rising. It's one of my favorite records of all time. And I'm going to say Stargazer and Lighten the Black. Stargazer, that's a great choice, definitely. I've, I've always said, I feel like that's almost like an underrated, it kind of gets pushed to the side sometimes, but it's such an epic track. Epic track. And it's got the great Jimmy Bain, who I just loved and adored as well. And and um, I believe, is Cozy on it? I think Cozy Powell's on it. But wow, what a track. And it, it, that just kind of set the table for the rest of the way for Ronnie and everybody, you know, it was just amazing. So I'm very excited to see this documentary and uh, I heard it's beautifully done and can't wait. So tell us real quick what's going on in your musical life right now. Uh, I'm doing something really cool I can't talk about. Uh, I've done two movies this year. Um, we wrote one in the pandemic and it's about 95% done. I scored the film. I did a movie with Mickey Rourke in Albuquerque and I'm playing with a bunch of different people and we're getting ready to do this Christmas thing. So, yeah, all kinds of- Some things in the works. Yeah, uh, blessed to be busy. Well, thanks so much for your time today. Thank you, I appreciate you. Right here on the red carpet with the amazing Lita Ford. It's an honor to meet you in person. How are you doing today? I'm doing awesome. I'm doing awesome. We flew in specifically for this event tonight and I'm so excited to see the documentary. Can't wait. You have a part in the documentary yeah. as well. Yes. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh my God. I can't wait, I'm like chewing my fingernails, sitting on the edge of my seat. Oh my well, I also wanna say a happy belated birthday to you. It was birthday oh, yesterday, yes. so it's a week of celebration, celebrating you yesterday, celebrating Dio tonight, right? Yes, yes, I love that. Perfect. So, I mean, can you. you tell me about um, kind of what 
has inspired you about Ronnie James Dio and you know what what makes him such an important person in your life well first of all I mean above and foremost everything Ronnie is was one of the most brilliant rock lead powerful heavy metal rock singers ever to walk the earth I mean you know I, I was telling this this gentleman down here Ronnie was one of one there was not another one like Ronnie anywhere anywhere and I don't know that there ever will be you know so we were really blessed to know each other and I was really blessed to to be able to perform with Ronnie and and we love him and we miss him so much the whole music industry misses Ronnie no, we're we're all here because we love and appreciate Ronnie's career yeah. so much okay. so um yeah. can you tell us what's going on with you currently in your musical world well we've been touring we've been touring all summer we got a lot of great audiences uh, through the United States, and um, and hopefully we will have a new record out for 2023, and uh, for our fans in 2023. So fingers crossed, everything goes smooth, and we get that record out for them. Well, something to look forward to. Thank you so much for your time tonight. Thank you. Bye. Here on the red carpet for the Dio Dreamers Never Die premiere with the awesome Joey Belladonna and Krista Belladonna. How are you doing today? Chelsea, Wonderful, thank you. Uh, Good beautiful you day, again. beautiful event, <laughs> great yeah. celebration. Yeah. Good to see you both again, and I mean, we're all here because, you know, we uh, adore and appreciate Ronnie's legacy in some way. So just um, how are you feeling about being here to celebrate his life tonight? Uh, I'm very excited, you know. I just, I can't wait to see the footage. You know, it's going to be very emotional. I, I heard it's incredible, and it does him quite the honor. Deserve, well deserved for him, so... Joe, you have done a lot of uh, tributes to Ronnie in your career, you know, from covering Dio songs as Anthrax to, you know, the song In the End, which was a direct Ronnie James Dio tribute. Uh, so I just kind of want to ask about, you know, in what ways you feel kind of connected with Ronnie to, to make these tributes to him. I, he's an upstate guy where I live, and uh, we've, I just feel like we're connected in that way because we were brought up in that area. And he's just a really, really great singer and a great human that, that's all it needs, man, and I'm just so happy to be a part of anything that he's done and people that he's worked with. I've become friends with a lot of the guys, so, you know, all the crew, a lot of those guys, too, are great people. I mean, on the red carpet tonight, there's just been so many great stories about, you know, beyond the, the theatrics that we see on the stage about just what a good, generous, kind person Ronnie was. So, I mean, do you guys have any specific memories or stories you'd like to share with him? Actually, yes. We were in Athens, and before they went on, I was sitting by myself, and he came over and introduced himself and kept me company. It's also that his birthday celebration that night, so at the hotel I had to go um, leave the next morning. They were leaving as well, so Joey asked, Ronnie, do you mind if Krista goes with you? And he said, of course. They came to my room, got me at 3.30 in the morning. Ronnie sat with me on the bus, talked with me the whole way. We got to the airport. They would not leave me till I got to my gate. Every single one of them, and Ronnie kept me company. And he's such a true gentleman, and it just, my heart. He, you know, we try and live up to his legacy. Everything we do, try to live up to what he did. Do you have a story to share as well, Joey? <laughs> well, I mean, one of my favorite stories is just being a part of any anybody that's been associated with him. And I was in a band called Bible Black, which was some of the guys from the ALF band. So that was before I joined Anthrax. So there's just something about that happening before I joined Anthrax to, to find myself being in that situation with people that were connected with him. It was an honor, you know, when I was so young to be a part of that so it, it worked it worked its well into me being an anthrax really you know the name got out people knew of me there and even though we didn't do a whole lot we really never got to play very often at all so it's kind of cool you know Cool, and I'm, I'm glad to add that story to tonight, everybody, you know, sharing the memories of Ronnie. Um, I know we're wrapping things up, and the movie's going to be starting in a few, but I do want to ask you, and it might be a bit of an on-the-spot question, but if Ronnie was standing here right now with us, what do you feel like you would say to him? I'll ask both of you. Oh my God. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, for well. being a warm, good person. Yeah, well, I miss you. <laughs> now, that, now that we can see you again tonight. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time tonight.